uh, without further ado, I'd like to turn it over to the faculty presenters. Uh, Professor Michael Cuthbert will talk about the exciting things that he and his students have been doing in his course, The Fundamentals of Music. Thank you. Thank you. So for the past few years, I've been teaching a class that um, on the catalog is called Fundamentals of Music. But what I always tell the students is they know what the fundamentals of music are. Listen to it. Think about it. Move with it. Try to make it. And enjoy. So then I tell them, thank you. That's been a great semester. And 10 minutes in, we say, if you want to continue, we'll do the not quite fundamentals of music, but still pretty important part of the class. And what I see um, here is that we know a lot about the evidence-based learning in the fundamentals of music. This is actually something that we have a lot of evidence for what works, how um, to make people learn more about melody, harmony, rhythm, and so on. And that means having the students spend a lot of time with instruments. We generally use the piano, but having them play instruments. Having them develop their ears by listening very closely to what's being played and by singing along. And when they write anything, whether it's a single note, a chord, or a long composition, having that played back to them, and often by very good performers. So we know what works. And we try to say, look, we're going to do this. But this is really, really hard to do. Um, so if we want to take what we generally promise, you know, this is a cover of a textbook. You can see you're going to, in one semester, go from not knowing anything about music to being a rock star. And how do we actually do this? We pass out a worksheet. And this worksheet, you know, we photocopy it. We give it to all the students. And they take it home. And they sit at their desks with a pencil. And they write down what they see with their eyes and what they've learned in their class would be the right answer. Three days later, four days later, they turn it in. Three, four, five days later, they get back from their professor, something that looks like this. Almost always, the important thing is major or minor. One's capital M, one's lowercase m. They always try to write in, in between when they don't know the answer. Um, and always, always, no matter what, at some point, there'll be a wrong answer that the professor will write, did you hear this? on it. Well, of course they don't hear it. This is a piece of paper. So what we've been trying to do uh, in my fundamentals class is trying to come up with some software that will make it more easy for the students to hear what they're doing and to uh, use this to reinforce their learning. Right now, the software is called Artuzi. Uh, it might be changing its name. When the students log in, it's just like any learning management software. They see that there's exercises, problem sets uh, that they need to do, and so on. But here's the difference. This is the same uh, question that the worksheet was before. This is, what type of chord are each of these? And here's how a student might answer it. Uh, that sounds like it might be other, other major. No. So the students are hearing each chord as it goes. They're changing their answers. Probably that one a little too fast. Well, that one seems minor. Good. We've learned what minor is. And that doesn't sound like anything before, so we'll put it over in other. What's important is not only has the student they have the same access to the things that they were doing on the worksheet. That is, they can see all of these answers. But even if they know the answer just by seeing what the chord is, they still have to hear it. There is that reinforcement that goes along that we know from previous studies is what helps people develop their ears and their music theory training. Sometimes we'll do assignments where um, notes are missing, and they have to tell which notes are actually in there and which ones were actually played and not. And again, they get immediate answers. One of the things that's been a big change um, is that we do a lot of in-class exercises. Um, if anybody's donating space, please, we could always use more space, because this is what the classroom looks like. All the students are sitting there with their laptops and their keyboards playing along. It can sometimes be very loud in class. And the headphones, when they're working, 
and they'll be working on in-class exercises on their own. And why is this so important? Why are they constantly doing things in class? It's because I'm going to invert a little bit the title of today. Our students are actually very, very good at having music in the, oops, having music in the mind. They know intellectually very quickly how to solve the problems that we give them. The hard part is how do they hear it in their ears so that they can play it back on the piano so that somebody else can hear the music that's going on in their mind? Or how do they sing it? So our hardest thing is how to go from mind to hand, two equally important parts of learning. So again, here we see the students. They're, um, they're going to play. Here's something that we might do. I have to Alt-Tab, I think. Is that it? If I go over here. And so we'll do a lot of singing and playing in class. Everything I play on my keyboard. Sing that with me. We have three kinds of, of reinforcement. You hear me sing it. I'm a terrible singer, but you hear me sing it. You sing it. You see the, me playing things. And if you were holding this in your hand, you'd be playing along. So you're learning the kinetic exercise. And then we're also seeing the notes down here on the staff, everything that goes along, so that as much as we can, all the elements of music learning try to come together. Um, and why can we do all this? It's because, oops, I gotta go back to here. I can do a lot of these things because we often think music theory is a very, music is a very, very creative process. And there are many aspects of music theory and music fundamentals that are very creative. Compose a piece, that's what we end the semester doing. Improvise on a theme, on the piano. Describe in words how a composer does something. But the fact is, a lot of what the students do are not creative, most of them. Write an E-flat major scale. There's one way to do it. And it's like that. And they write it down on paper, and then they play it on the piano, and the piano does it, and they get immediate feedback. I don't need to grade that. <laughs> Tap a melody in time. Let's see if we can do that. I was a little late on the last one. Is it close enough? Oh, no. <laughs> so they will be keep doing this over and over. This is part of their reinforcement on, the, on their work every night. Um, and what's, we've always, always, always known this is important. This is important. The evidence has said this. But which professor has time to sit for 30 minutes every week with every student and make sure they're doing this? The computer does. The last thing that we're working on in the research lab, because I also do research on these things, is trying to make it so their, um, their web browsers are smart enough to solve this particular problem. They need to learn to sing. Why not have the computer tell them, sing this note. There'll be the notes on the left. On the right's going to be the note that they're singing. And then it tells them they can go on when you've sang the note. Da. That student's doing a lot better than, uh, than most of the students. In addition to using all this evidence from before, we're creating a lot of new evidence on how music fundamentals works. So I can get through every single one of their assignments as they're doing them in real time. Who is missing what? Why are they missing it? We have an enormous database, this is the raw data, of every single correct answer, incorrect answer, what the student guessed first, and what they tried to, um, and how did they eventually get to the right answer. So that we can uh, return as teachers to give them this immediate feedback to find out how they're doing, how long exercises they're taking, adjust future classes, and then ultimately using all these things not to spend less time teaching, but to spend more of our teaching time doing the creative things that we as professionals 
are able to do and that the computer can't. So this class is becoming more fun for me every time. And thanks, you guys, for listening to me talk about it.